So I thought I would do a full EDC update for the new month. And by full I mean literally everything I carry with me on an everyday basis instead of the usual uh, personal carry. So I'll start off with the personal carry and then I'll get into my work gear. So as far as my personal carry goes, just to make the video quicker, I've laid everything out in front of the camera. So I've got the pouch right here. Leatherman pouch. And this is my multi-tool, obviously. And of course, it's still the Victorinox Spirit. I'm still trying to get around to getting the uh, SOG uh, switch plier. I just haven't gotten around to it yet, and I can't really justify buying it until this breaks. But two years old, still flawless, a little bit of play, but it's pretty much the same as the day it was when I got it. I say that in every video I know, but it's just such an impressive multi-tool. So that's the spirit. And I've also got a Falcon Ivan. Uh, DC3 uh, Sharpening stone in the same pouch And in this pouch uh, My expedition I can't remember the name of the pouch But in here I've just got a Right in the rear notepad same as usual And my phone, which is still the Alcatel uh, One Touch by Pixie. Or I don't know if it's Pixie Alcatel One Touch, I don't know. I'm not that in touch with phones. I just have one because I need one for my business. So that's the phone. Uh, the wallet is still the exact same as the last video, it's the Urban Wallet. And it's pretty much the same. I don't know if I showed it in the last video, but I've got the uh, Leatherman Prana 2. And this thing is still one of my favourite single piece multi tools. It's saved the day a few times since I've had it. And it's just a great little multi tool. Highly recommend that. Uh, the keychain. It's changed very slightly. I've still got the Phoenix NW20 whistle, the uh, EO1 flashlight, and the Victorinox. Uh, still can't remember the model of that. I think it's the. It's not the Grasshopper. That's the biggest one. It's in between the Grasshopper and the Bug. I will look it up eventually. And the newest item is this. It's one of those uh, glow fob things. The little lanterns and it's actually saved the day twice this month where I lost my keys and when the night came I found them just because of that so I'll switch the light off and see if you can see it on camera you can't really see oh wait there it is right there you can just see it that little faint glow right there camera's not picking it up very well but that's really bright with my naked eye and uh, it just charges with sunlight I'm sure how everybody knows how those things work they're pretty popular now but uh, yeah that's the newest little addition it's been really cool liked it a lot uh, the work knife is the very sexy SOG, eh, SOG, it's a fox. Me and Italy. A very nice, sexy knife. Lock back, nice boy style blade. I really love this knife. With stainless steel uh, bolsters. And a little brass emblem. So that's the uh, work knife. 
And as far as my general ADC knife goes now, I always just use the little spider core on the keychain. Does the job. Sometimes it struggles, but I don't really see any real need to carry anything bigger than that really in a normal ADC situation. Unless you're in a knife fighting or something like that. But uh, anyway, the pen is still the Max Expedition Acantha. I still love this pen. And that just goes with a notepad, obviously. And the flashlight, I think you've already seen it. Still, the Olight M10 Maverick. Still, the best flashlight. I've ever owned. Awesome. So I'll go into my bag next. So this is my EDC bag. It is still the Maxpedition uh, Monsoon. I think it's coming up to about 12, 13 years old now. And I still can't break it. And I still hate it. So the contents of the EDC bag are pretty much the exact same as the last video I showed it in, but these are some of the newer items. So I've got a Phoenix T820, which is a great flashlight. I can select what I want before I switch it on, which is a nice little feature. I've got an emergency uh, backup phone. Which is Sony Xperia. Because you never know. A little first aid kit, which I have updated. It's got extra band aid suture kit, uh, super glue, uh, scalpel blade, uh, alcoholic gauze pads. Sorry, alcoholic wipes and gauze pads. And uh, absorbent dresses as well. So. The only thing that's not in there is uh, bandages, just because they wouldn't fit in there. Uh, toilet roll, just in case I've had like a dodgy curry or something the night before and I go to a client's house and I have to quickly run to the toilet. Trick is, don't use their toilet roll because then they'll know you've been for a shit. So bring your own toilet roll, you feel the urge, go to your bag, stuff the toilet roll in your pocket, just say, can I use your toilet? Pretend you've had a pee, drop trow, drop one, or pinch one out, or squirt one out, depending on how bad it is. And uh, yeah, that's my little trick. Clients hate it when you go to the house and have a shit in the toilet. So, they're fine with you pissing in the toilet, but not shitting in the toilet. So, always take your own toilet roll. And hope that they've got like air fresheners around, otherwise they'll know you'll take a, you've taken a shit. But uh, anyway, lastly, spare glasses, just because I wear glasses. If I break these and I don't have spare glasses, then I'm fucked. I'm blind without glasses, and I really don't like uh, contact lenses because I don't like putting things in my eyes. And I don't want laser eye surgery because, again, I really don't want fucking laser beams by my eyes. So, yeah, that is my personal ADC gear. Let's go on to my work gear now. So as far as my work ADC goes, I'll show the stuff that I showed in my last full ADC video. And then I'll work my way into the newer stuff because I've got quite a few new items that I use for work. But uh, anyway, I'll start off with this. It's the uh, hedge trimmer, the Sovereign. And this is actually fucked. Doesn't work anymore. Just yesterday, it does work, the motor runs. I'm not going to start it now because it's uh, 10 past 10 at night. So I'm not going to start it, but it does run. The engine works fine. But when I try the uh, when I try to work the blades, the blades aren't moving. So and uh, this plate right here, it's blown out a little bit. 
towards this nut in the middle. So obviously something's jammed in there somehow. But uh, yeah, hedge trimmer's no longer working. And this and my lawnmower are my main workhorse because I can use this for pretty much everything. It's my brush cutter hedge trimmer. Well, mainly a brush cutter and a hedge trimmer is mainly what I used it for. Because my uh, string trimmer, or weed whacker, whatever you want to call it, isn't up to the job of a normal brush cutter. So, this has done everything that this is, the uh, weed whacker couldn't. So that's now fucked. But we'll take it to the shop tomorrow and get it repaired, hopefully. So, yeah, that's the uh, hedge trimmer. And here's my weed whacker. Or strimmer, or string trimmer. It's still a sovereign, and this thing is absolutely perfect. I've beat the shit out of this, and it's gone above and beyond what it's capable of. I've beefed up the string strimmer line, which I think's about one or two millimeter more than the recommended line you should use in this but it's been absolutely perfect and uh, I've just started a gardening channel that I'll be uploading videos to soon so you'll be able to see all of my equipment in use shortly if you're interested in that sort of thing but uh, yeah it's my uh, string trimmer so here's the petrol lawnmower, this is the main workhorse. Again Sovereign. Still haven't upgraded it or anything else, I've felt no need, I've had absolutely no problems with this lawnmower whatsoever. And it's probably cut about its 500th lawn since I've had it. Like I say it's not a self repelled, it's just a standard push mower. Hormone grade. And it's still been perfect. I've changed the air filter three times now since I've owned it. The spark plug's been changed twice. And uh, besides that, it's been pretty good. And the oil's been changed about three times as well. But uh, besides that, it's absolutely perfect. Besides being covered in cut grass and shit it's just really good so that is my lawnmower and I've got no plans to upgrade it yet and here is my emergency backup lawnmower which is still the sovereign hand push cylinder mower the GT5 614 still awesome and well used as you can see. I mainly use this on my garden but I've got it mainly as an emergency backup just in case the petal one fucks up. But uh, yeah. It's pretty much all I can see on this is just awesome. Only 20... I want to say 29 pound I think. It was either 25 or 29 pound I paid for this. It's coming up to two years old now. I've done my yard with it once or twice a week for two years with this. Uh, the wheels are a little bit loose, but besides that, it's perfect. And I've adjusted the blade against the bed knife only once. It's pretty good. The only thing I don't like about it is the uh, grass collection bag. It's only 18 litres. So if the grass is tall, I've got to stop maybe every 10, 12 foot to empty it out. But uh, besides that, I can't really fault the lawnmower. So here's one of the newest items. It's my wheelbarrow. Got it yesterday from a flea market. Second hand, obviously. And I'm actually about to restore this. It's a little bit beat up. So 
So I've already separated the barrel from the framework. And my main plan is I'm just going to strip off all of the old paint and rust. And I'm just going to spray paint it all green. And I'm going to keep the barrel as it is. Because it's in pretty good condition. I don't think it's ever been used. But yeah, I paid £3 for this from a flea market. Which I think is a pretty good deal. And the wheel is solid rubber. It's not uh, inflatable or anything. It's literally just a solid rubber wheel. So I'll never get a puncture in that. So hopefully that's something that's going to last a long time. But that is my brand new wheelbarrow. And this is my brand new... Well not brand new, I've had it for about a month. But this is my multi-purpose uh, spreader. By Evergreen. And this has made a lot of customers happy. By improving their lawns. It's good for grass seed, uh, fertilizers and composts. I've mainly been using this uh, uh, after cut all in one stuff. It's lawn feed, weed and moss killer. It's pretty good and cheap. And as far as the grass seed I've been using is just some cheap shade. But it's also very good. It says somewhere that it shows results in four days, which is bollocks here yeah, there. Imagine in four days. My experience is I've used this stuff on my lawn. I always use I always try this stuff out on my own lawn before I use it on customers' lawns just to make sure it works. This doesn't show results until after two weeks. And this shows results after about two, three weeks. But it's good stuff, obviously. I wouldn't use it if it wasn't. My business relies on this sort of thing. But yeah, this thing I'm really happy with. It's got mixed reviews on the internet, but uh, it's just a general purpose spreader. Some people like it, some people don't. I love it. So now for the hand tools. Got a general purpose lawn rake. The Spear and Jackson spade, which I showed in the last video. A bog standard shitty rake, which again I showed in the last video. That's my felling axe. I'm only running a very small gardening business, so I don't want to fork out £1,500 for a chainsaw certificate. So I'm still just using uh, axes and saws to fell very small trees up to 20 feet. And I've been doing good that way. This thing's never let me down. And I'm still using the original saw, but that's in the car and I can't be bothered to get it. So, yeah. That's part of my tree felling gear. Uh, this thing is a very old antique rake which I've been using. And I picked this up at a flea market. It did have Made in England on it somewhere, but when I was filing off of the rust, I filed too far down and getting rid of the maker's mark and whatnot. But anyway, got that. A uh, little hole, which is one of the most versatile, handy little pieces of kit I can recommend. And that is made in England, which you cannot really see. I got the big hole, and I picked this up in the same place I got the rake from. I think that's probably his 1940s. Made in England. It's got the maker's mark and everything on there, which I can't read because it's a bit badly worn out. None of these things were kept very well by the last owner. So, but yeah, that's that. And then from the same person I picked up the rake and the hoe from, 
I got this cool fork, which is a Spear and Jackson England, and this is the sort of thing I love. It's got the hammer forging marks from the blacksmith. The tines are perfect, wooden handles, so I can easily replace that if it breaks. That's why I hate these fucking shitty metal things, because if these break, you've got to throw up the whole thing. But, uh, it's like these. All of these tools here with the wooden handles, I replaced those. And they're back in fully working order. And that's what I love about vintage equipment. They're just easy to fix. So, yeah, that's the fork. And that's my uh, pruning thing and saw. Telescopic pruning saw pull thing. It's been okay, I've had it for about two months. It hasn't let us down yet. Just cheap made in China, nothing fancy. I'm not gonna rag on China, they do make some shit. But uh, some of the things are pretty cool. I like some Chinese knives like Rough Riders, as I think some people will know. They're a pretty good knife maker. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going off topic. Uh, Edge and Shear is very important. And they're Spear and Jackson. And uh, lastly, as far as edging tools go, I got the Victory Garden Tools Rotary Manual Edger. And this thing is epic. I can go around pavements and things with this that I wouldn't risk doing with the uh, edging shears. Just in case I damage the edging shears. Because those were very expensive. Well, that was very expensive as well. It was 35. And I think that was 30. Oh, it was also 35. Or 25, I can't remember. Which isn't very expensive. But when you're trying to run a very small garden and business, the equipment you buy... You have to try and make it last, so yeah. So now one of the hand tools, and then I'll end the video because it's already probably going on for almost half an hour, I think. Or the other hand tools, I should say, the smaller hand tools. Going off subject again. Let's get to it. So inside of this little bag. We have some gloves which are Mechanics Impacts. I did have the uh, Mechanics Fast Fits but I've worn those out completely to the point of being practically fingerless. So replace those with these and these are a lot better. And I've still got the uh, very cheap axe that I got from Asda a few years ago. Some old school uh, Lopin shears, which are Spear and Jackson, England. And they're pretty good. Still got the emergency backup hedge cutter. In the form of the hedge and shears, which saved the day yesterday when my uh, petrol hedge cutter fucked up. Uh, garden sacks, very important. So I've got a few of those. Old school 1930s. Hand fork. If I could replace everything with vintage gear, I would. Because, like I said, it's built to last. Uh, just some cheap old pruning shears. Uh, another Spear and Jackson trowel. Spare line for the uh, string trimmer. And these are plumb lines. I mentioned in the last video I forgot what these were called and somebody corrected me on what they were. It's a plumb line. Apologies to the person who corrected us, I can't remember who it was. 
and my homemade weeding tool and uh, that is it and that is all of my equipment for running my very small gardening business so as well as my personal EDC gear so a little bit different to usual EDC videos and I'm sure this has gone on for way too long there's probably nobody watching it at this point so I'm probably just been babbling on for probably the last 10 minutes but uh, yeah if you're still watching then thanks for watching and uh, yeah hope everybody has a great day and night and a uh, new video is coming up soon like I say I've started a gardening channel so if anyone wants to see any of this crap in actual use then uh, I'll link that in the description when I start uploading videos to that channel but uh, until then Thanks for watching and goodbye and uh, yeah.